The Helios is the U.S. Navy's first truly operational laser weapon, with enough energy to power an entire neighborhood compressed into a single pinpoint. This system represents a great leap forward in military technology, comparable to gunpowder and machine guns. Known officially as the High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, recent developments show the Helios is poised to change the face of naval warfare forever. Although not much has been officially released about its exact operating parameters and capabilities, we do know a few things for sure. As of now, the Helios is only operationally deployed on the guided missile destroyer the USS Preble. If you look at this picture, you will see that the Helios is installed on the forward Sea Whiz mount. This is important for many reasons. When the Navy came up with the Arleigh Burke class destroyers, they wanted to put two close in weapon systems on board with one forward and one aft, like the one shown here. However, the Navy later decided to scrap installing two Sea Whiz systems on non BMD capable ships. Because of this, about 50% of the Navy's destroyer fleet only has one Sea Whiz back aft, and the forward mount remains empty. This is where the Navy decided to put Helios. And this is the best place to put it because the Helios needs power, and lots of it. When the Sea Whiz is firing, it needs about 18 kilowatts of energy. However, when the Sea Whiz is in tracking mode, it needs up to 70 kilowatts to scan for targets to engage. Because of this and the several thousand rounds per minute the Sea Whiz can shoot, the weapon has some of the highest energy needs on the ship. So, there's already a ton of infrastructure that the Navy can plug and play with to install the Helios. With the current power output of 60 kilowatts and the potential to scale to 120 kilowatts in the near future, the ship was inadvertently designed to handle such a power weapon already. These existing connections have the added benefit of allowing the Helios to connect into the ship's Aegis combat system. This allows the Helios to be a fully integrated weapon that can receive targeting data from spy radar, be an option for the Tactical Action Office to choose from when engaging a threat, and conduct three different mission sets all at the same time. When looking at the Helios on its mount, you first notice that it's rather small. In fact, the system appears to be about half the size of the Sea Whiz that was intended to be there. But despite being rather small, this system packs a serious punch, starting with the main aperture at the bottom of the system. Here, this is where the main laser emitter fires from. However, the crew is not firing this weapon with a hope and prayer that it'll hit something. Rather, if you look above the main aperture, you will see two more circular screens. These lenses are the tracking and targeting components of the Helios. Although we don't know for sure which one is which, we can infer that the smaller circle is the tracking module and the larger one is the targeting one. This inference is based on the fact that the energy needed when tracking a wide area is less than when targeting. This is because when any air defense system targets something, the radar puts out massive amounts of energy to get as many returns back as quickly as possible so it can come up with a fire control solution on a speeding target in real time. But while this explains the system's proverbial meat and potatoes, what is that thing to the right? Remember in the official name, the last two words were Dazzler and Surveillance? This is where those come into play. When trying to understand what a laser Dazzler is, the best way to think about it, it's one of those off-the-shelf laser pointers. You know, the ones people get in trouble for pointing at aircraft? This is just like that, but much better. You see, the laser dazzlers are pretty common in the maritime industry, both for military and commercial shipping. If anyone has been to the Middle East or the Western Pacific, then you'll know that getting flashed by these is like being abducted by aliens in close encounters of the third kind. The Helios has the same capability, but on a much bigger scale. It's used as a sort of non-lethal defense measure to get people's attention or make them stop what they're doing. This is much better than the current LA-9P portable laser dazzlers on ships that look like they were ordered off of Timu. The last part of this mouthful of a name is surveillance. Although this might be surprising to you, US destroyers do not have a dedicated surveillance camera. In fact, 
The current way to work around this fatal design flaw is for crews to man the 5-inch gun camera while underway at all times as a navigational aid, identifying friends or foes, and assessing battle damage. However, this is not the intended purpose of a 5-inch gun camera, and the constant scanning by crew members wears out the batteries on this several hundred thousand dollar camera. Now, with Helios, crews have a purpose-built surveillance camera equipped with high-definition capabilities and thermal and night vision capabilities. But how does this thing actually perform in battle? Does it truly live up to its expectation of a game-changing weapon? Or is it really just a glorified laser pointer? According to recent media reports from the U.S. Navy, the Preble carried out a classified live-fire demonstration sometime recently, and the results were not expected. Somewhere in the vast western Pacific, the crew of the USS Preble was steaming toward the target area. Their mission? To locate, track, and shoot down an incoming hostile plane that resembled a Cessna aircraft. As the crew got into their operations box, they slackened speed and began moving forward at a crawl. Somewhere in the night sky was the plane. They had no idea where it would be or where it would come from, but they were ready. As the crew cautiously monitored their screens in the ship's combat information center, they were trying to figure out that if a little bit of clutter on the screen was the hostile aircraft or just a cloud. During this time, there were several close calls where the tactical action officer ordered the watchstanders to check and print suspected tracks. Each applicable watchstander would rattle off their part of their report. The EW would report the electronic signals, the TAC would say the modes and codes, and subsequent reports followed these until the TAO had a complete picture of the suspect track. This happened again and again until they finally had the target in sight. At an undisclosed distance, the Preble's spy radar picked up a return of the hostile aircraft. The rest of the watchstanders confirmed the track did indeed correlate to the suspected target. With that, the TAO requested batteries release from the captain, who promptly granted it. At the same time, he rolled the fire inhibit switch to green, the final safety measure before going live, and sent a beam of light streaming into the night sky. Using the Helios cameras, the team had a crystal clear view of the target. Within seconds, the plane began to show visible damage and healed to one side before exploding into a ball of fire and crashing into the sea. A cheer went up throughout combat as the crew made naval history. They were the first ever Navy ship to shoot down an enemy aircraft. Although this was just a test, the target was actually an unmanned plane. The live fire demonstration proved the Helios is more than capable of conducting hard kills at just 60 kilowatts of power, but this is not the only thing it can do. During subsequent tests, the Preble also tested other features of the Helios, including its soft kill measures. Because targets may not be able to be physically destroyed, knocking out their radars and other sensors can effectively turn a multi-million dollar weapon into an overpriced paperweight. Though details were not provided on the exact nature of these engagements, the Navy claims the Helios can conduct engagements against unmanned small boats and other aerial targets like drones. So, with the Helios now proving it's a viable system, where does it go from here? Because of the recent developments in the Middle East, the Helios may be the next major weapon system fast-tracked onto Navy U.S. surface combatants. Since November of 2023, the Navy has publicly confirmed that U.S. warships have conducted at least 60 intercepts of Houthi missiles and drones, including one incident where a dozen drones attacked a ship at once. During all of these engagements, the Navy confirmed that the crews fired SM-2 missiles to take out all these threats. The SM-2 is the workhorse of naval air defense, and it is the most common catch-all for every threat that's not any type of ballistic or advanced missile. However, at the cost of more than a million dollars per shot, the Navy has been blowing through hundreds of millions of dollars of SM-2s to take out $5,000 Shahid drones. And although this has worked so far, it's kind of like dropping a nuclear bomb on an anthill. Effective? Sure. Smart? Probably not. Because of this, Navy leadership has been looking for a more cost-effective way to take out lower-priority threats like drones and outdated subsonic missiles. 
Additionally, the Navy wants a weapon that can take out the swarms of fast attack craft and fast inshore attack craft fielded by Iran. These small boat swarms combined with a drone attack could overwhelm a ship's defenses by exhausting missiles and ammunition before a more lethal weapon is launched at ships. To prevent U.S. Navy captains from having to choose between which targets to shoot down or not to conserve ammunition, the Helios is a must-have in theater since it has no need to be reloaded, takes just seconds to take out a target, and can fire as long as you have a stable source of power. And that is just one of the main hiccups that the Navy must overcome. Because numerous systems aboard destroyers like Spy need huge amounts of power, there's only so much energy the ship's gas turbine generators can produce. Because of this, the Navy first practiced testing earlier versions of laser weapons on larger ships like the USS Ponce or the USS Portland that could generate more power. However, the Navy is working with its defense partners to create more powerful generators to install on the newest Flight 3 DDGs. With these better generators, the Helios could easily and reliably fire 120 kilowatt beams of energy that can even take out incoming ballistic missiles. Now only time will tell if the Navy can overcome that challenge. Bye for now.